Welcome to King County at your service. I'm Day Shugrin, Equity and Social Justice Director for King County Council. You'll be happy to hear that there's a brand new park on Green River near Kent. Van Doren's Landing offers a beautiful playground, trails, and a teaching station to learn about the area's history. But this park is a lot more than just another pretty place. This flood control district project has something for everyone. There's flood risk reduction, there's the fish and wildlife benefits, there's the recreation and open space benefits. This project kind of has it all. And that's quite unique for an urban area, an area so urban as, as this valley has become. This was a reach of the river that had a, a real damaged levee. There was also a really limited habitat along this reach for fish and wildlife. We wanted to show the community that the Flood District can not only protect lives, homes, businesses, and property, but also create really beautiful environmental gems, environmental parks uh, that serve not only to protect from flooding, but give families and communities a place to recreate as well as protect the environment. We are standing very close to the location of the village of Stuck. The construction team uncovered cooking stones and, and artifacts. It was amazing to be able to touch the stones that our ancestors touched, to, to kneel down in front of them. Getting reacquainted with these special places stirs something inside and it really promotes a person to reconsider their identity about who they are and where they come from. There is a very long and uh, complex history of this river valley, but many of the changes that have taken place over the years have come at the cost of salmon habitat degradation. Juvenile salmon need slow water where they can swim without expending too much energy, but also near food where they can feed and, and grow. And so we tried to include those features in the habitat elements that we created. We also have an artificial creek that has been constructed here. It creates this nice flowing mud flat habitat that the birds and the amphibians love. We also have these log structures. They're floating log rafts that provide essentially hiding places and more complex habitat for juvenile fish. It's resulted in this creation of a whole, you know, new um, aquatic ecosystem there that hasn't been in the floodplain of the Lower Green River for many, many, many years. We sampled more than 10 different kinds of native fish species in the backwater, so that was really exciting. Your average resident around here is going to see, oh, look at the play structures, look at the picnic tables, look at the waterfront, the, the, the river beaches, look at the trails, and they're going to appreciate it and love it. But if you look more closely, you'll see that the levees and the revetments that are set back are designed to handle a 500-year flood event. This is not a project the city of Kent could have done alone. It's not a project King County could have done alone. The flood control district, it really takes the collaboration of all of sort of those levels of government to get to projects of this scale. And we're grateful for all of those partnerships. The Green River Valley is the second largest industrial and manufacturing center on the west coast of the United States. And these structures are critically important to protect all of that infrastructure and of course, people's lives. We as native people, are going to utilize this for a very special purpose to get our children and our, our younger adults reacquainted with this special place called Stuck. We have a responsibility in the Green River to future generations to protect our threatened salmon, to meet our responsibilities to tribal governments, and this project is the kind of project that we need to be doing up and down the river. As we move forward into the future, we need more projects like this where we can set the river back, restore habitat, improve recreation, and meet those important responsibilities.
Ruth Wu was a longtime civic leader here in King County. She focused on getting people from diverse communities involved in government. And now King County is honoring her work with the Ruth Wu Emerging Leaders Fellowships. We'd like you to meet some of these amazing young leaders. I'm a child of refugees, I'm Cambodian. I am an undocumented individual and I am a DACA recipient. I was born um, in Seattle and grew up in South Seattle. So the full title is the Ruth Wu Emerging Leaders Fellowship. Whenever I bring it up to people, I tell them that it's like an opportunity for non-government folks to get into government and see how that is. I've worked in a variety of different sectors and I would have to say this has been my favorite place to work so far. I just feel really empowered by the work I do. I was thinking, you know, I want to engage more in the macro side of things, the policy, uh, local government. Climate change is happening. We have the data for it. We need people who can actually use that data and who want to work in public policy and to make a difference. TLDR, I've always known I wanted to go into like, to service. Folks here really do care about the community and the people that they serve. I love community work. I love giving back to those who gave so much to me when I was growing up. I feel as though county work should be the standard. The kind of work that we want to put forward is the work that we want to use to represent how society should be run. Getting young folks involved in politics. I think that's super important. I don't, I don't want to sound cliche, but just, you know, go at it with your might. Apply, please apply. The people here genuinely want to see you succeed. I actually was hired with, for King County in a career service position, um, and I just started a month ago. Coming into this fellowship, being placed with the Metro Transit Department, I've been surprised at how much fun I've been having. If y'all hear announcements uh, for the Free Youth Transit Pass or Free Fridays, that is my voice. Uh. <laughs> Government work is has been wonderful. I am energized by how much everybody cares around me, how much everybody tries for the community. It has been very energizing and very great working with people. Having a social safety net is critical for families in need. In North King County, that safety net is a lot stronger thanks to an organization called NUSA. Hola, hola. Buenos dias. This program is intended for family members, friend or neighbor caregivers, and parents that are caring and raising young children before they enter kindergarten. Arriba! And we specialize in reaching our Hispanic Latinx community with our Spanish-speaking staff. And all of these children deserve to be prepared for kindergarten. And parents and caregivers deserve to have access to information to help be the child's first teacher. The North King County area is continually growing. It's more diverse. We have hidden pockets of poverty across our region. North King County has about 10% of the population of King County, and we have about 10% of the needs, but we don't have 10% of the services. NUSA was created in 2009 to bring attention to the needs and challenges um, in North King County. NUSA is a connector. They bring together different human service providers in our North King County area and make those connections. It's so important because as a provider, our focus is on the families that we work with. We advocate for increased human services funding to build that capacity in North King County. We advocate for increased wages for our essential and hardworking human service providers. We also advocate for affordable housing options and policies. It's interesting to note that a $100 increase in rent is associated with a 9% increase in homelessness. Keeping people housed is paramount. To have somebody like Celia be keeping that at the forefront of her mind, to say, hey, we're here, uh, up here in North King County, don't forget about us. Knowing we have an advocate like that, that takes the time and energy to share our stories as providers 
that's Celia and uh, that's Noosa. It's not just about programs or systems, but it's about people, and serving families and making sure that North King County is really the best place to live and raise a family and be a strong and healthy, connected community. Remembering those who came before us can tell us a lot about ourselves. Well, thanks to historian Bill Comble, the history of Southeast King County will be preserved for generations to come. My name is Bill Comble. I was uh, born here in Washington, in Seattle. Grew up in Selick, Durham, Enumclaw. Eventually migrated to Black Diamond. My family has lived here for uh, at least five generations. Uh, we've been here for a very long time. I think that has uh, fueled my passion for history. When Coal Was King is my column, published in The Voice of the Valley, and I write it just to remember uh, historical events, to try to teach people or help them understand, once again, a world before they came here. This was the depot uh, for Black Diamond when railroads came out to Black Diamond and basically you know, made the town. And this museum I call the, the biggest small town museum around. The Black Diamond Historical Society Museum. The greatest museum in any small town. Was it the high heat mine? He worked at the high heat yeah, mine. Yeah, the too. high heat mine there, that was uh, number 68. He helped us uh, produce two maps that we have here in the museum. One is of the local mines. It has 43 mines on it based on the production level. And then a map of the railroads. And without his knowledge, that's simply, they would not have happened. I did work in an underground coal mine. I, I consider myself quite fortunate to have done so. Uh, it was called the Rogers Number no. 3 Mine, and it was the last underground coal mine in the state of Washington. You could just ask him about a mine or a person or the house or some project that went on, and whoop, he'll just whip it out, that history. Look here. Yeah. I love these pictures of the miners. We were speaking about, you know, Gomer Evans, who, uh, was what I call you know, the godfather of the Black Diamond Museum. And he just passed away, so I did a little tribute to him. Bill captured the essence of him and his soul and that story and his contributions to this town. Bill is one of those people that when they write, they capture the essence of the person or the event or whatever that, and that's what makes his articles every week so fascinating. Before all of this stuff, there were people, pioneers, and I like to remember those, you know, contributions. Traffic. It slows us all down and wastes time. But check out this new truck station near North Bend. It's getting some very popular trucks back on the road. Damn, this traffic jam. Everyone knows Seattle's traffic is bad. <laughs> It means a lot of wasted time, especially for commercial truck drivers who have limits on drive time. Traffic in King County is very challenging. John Jameson is a driver for a special kind of truck. We have a very large vehicle that we have to move this product in, and the traffic's bad. I'm a driver for Loop. Just what is Loop, you might ask? Loop is a uh, nutrient product that uh, comes from human waste, and it's processed and turned into a uh, uh, organic dirt. It's pliable like dirt. It doesn't really have a smell, and it's really great for, uh, for plant life. In fact, it's so good for plants that it's a hot commodity for growers and foresters in eastern Washington. It's pretty popular. In fact, I think that if, the, if we could put 10 more treatment plants up and put 100 more trucks on the road, there would be customers that would take it. It helps the trees in the forest. It helps the, the wheat fields out in eastern Washington and some of the hops fields uh, out in the uh, Yakima Valley. But loop trucks have been spending a lot of time stuck in, yeah, traffic. So King County's Wastewater Treatment Division came up with a solution. They closed the Loop Vehicle Operations Center near SeaTac, the lease was up anyway, and moved it here to North Bend, conveniently located right next to I-90. 
It's great for taking some of the time off um, in the travel over the mountains. So you, you shave off about an hour of time. A truck that's staged and ready to go saves several hours a day if it's staged out of this facility. It's now affectionately called the Loop Truck Shop, built on county-owned property. It's modern, spacious, and even applying for LEED certification for its green building and landscaping. What do drivers think? Traveling from this facility over to Eastern Washington uh, saves a tremendous amount of time and, and cost to King County. Now hundreds of loop trucks are using it. Everything looks good. Avoiding Seattle traffic. Damn. We're ready to go. And heading east. Damn. Do your kids need vaccine updates before heading back to school? Well, have you ever wondered just how vaccines work? Here's some good information from Public Health Seattle King County. How do vaccines work? When your child gets infected with a virus or bacteria, their body acts kind of like an army, sending out soldiers or antibodies to fight the invading virus or bacteria. And even after the disease is gone, your child's body remembers how to make the right antibodies. That way, if they're ever exposed to the disease again, they'll be able to fight it off without any effort. This is what we call immunity. Vaccines imitate infections without actually causing severe illness. They give your child's body practice at defending against germs. This way, your child can develop immunity without having to get seriously ill. And the great news is that when your child gets vaccinated, they're also helping to keep everyone around them safe as well, including babies that are too young to get certain vaccines, and elders whose bodies may not develop as much immunity from vaccination. Vaccines are like umbrellas. In a rainstorm, everyone who has an umbrella doesn't get wet. When enough people have umbrellas together, they can create a sort of canopy that protects everyone from the rain. Even babies too young to hold up their own umbrella and older people who are too frail to hold one up. In the same way, when almost everyone is vaccinated, that means everyone gets protected because diseases are less likely to spread. Are you crazy about your pet? Well, you know the best way to protect your pet is to get it licensed. Not only does it provide peace of mind for you, but it helps provide services for thousands of other pets. License for Love is a campaign that Regional Animal Services of King County runs on an annual basis to encourage people who haven't licensed their pets to get a license, which is a form of identification that helps pets get returned back to their owner. It's basically a metal tag that's worn on the collar of a cat or dog, and in the event that it, the pet becomes lost, the um, identification tag has a, a unique number on it that is recorded in our database so that when people call to say, I found a lost pet, Regional Services, King County. We can get the pet returned back to the owner because we have the contact information in our database. Well, here at Regional Animal Services, King County, we get um, people's pets coming in every day from animal control officers going out into the field. Uh, but the pet that's unlicensed, it's likely to come into the shelter and has a, you know, there's a chance that it may never get back to, to the pet owner. So with a pet license, uh, the great thing about that is uh, when an animal control officer finds that pet in the field, they'll make every attempt to return the animal back into the field to uh, the pet owner. Oh, oh, sir. Hey. Gotcha, doggy, dude. We get calls daily for uh, animals that are found loose, running at large, um, and it's important to be able to return that pet um, back to the owner. So a pet license allows us to do that. Yeah, so if you have an unlicensed pet, um, one of the biggest uh, drawbacks for that would be um, not being able to get it reunited in the field by an animal control officer or someone who may come across your beloved pet and not know that it's, you know, it, it's owned by someone, right? That it, it is part of a family, so that's a challenge. All pets are required to be licensed in King County, so that fine is up to $250 if you have an unlicensed pet. Last year, RAS took in 3,763 lost pets, and 895 of those pets were successfully returned to their owners. 100% of pet licensing fees go to help fund the cost of sheltering pets and providing animal services in our community. We're an organization that really cares about people and pets. We have a website you can visit for licensing purposes and also to find out more information about our program and that's kingcounty.gov slash pets. 
We also have a phone number where you can reach us during business hours, which is 206-296-2712. Thanks for joining us for King County at your service. Visit us online at kingcounty.gov backslash KCTV. See you next time.